Edward Evans's parents. Been identifying the body. Thank you. <laughs> Can you go? So they believe you? Dunno. They've let Myra go too, thank God. What? So she can't have been involved. Why did you lie to me, Dave? I didn't lie. She's the one that's lying. She must have fibbed the way out of it. Let's just get out of here. So, we found the wallet inside the car. This is Brady's car? No, that's Henley's car. Brady doesn't drive. We found three sheets of paper inside here. We've got them copied. What do you think this is? That's some kind of disposal plan for the body. OK, explain it to me. We think Hat is Hatchet, Rick, reconnaissance. Check. Periodically unmoved. Check what's unmoved? Body. Bodies. Tick, WH, PB. No. God knows. Is this where it happened? Aye, hard to believe, isn't it? it? Must have spent ages cleaning up this place. So where was the body found? Over by the window. Fetal position, body wrapped in polythene. Bit of a photographer, is he then, Brady? Fond of the moors by the looks of it. Isn't that her? Aye, that's her. Come to see a granny, I expect. Had to boot her out of here, obviously. You sure you've done the right thing letting her go? That's Benfield's decision, no mine. What do you think, sir? I think there was a plan to get rid of the body using the car. Look, car, remove all movable objects, clean cover, floor and seat, fresh poly at night. I mean, this is her car. He doesn't even drive, you said. Who else is going to drive the car, for Christ's sakes, once they put a body in the back? How can she possibly not be involved? Smith? Yes. DCI Mansi, Ashton Police. I need to speak to your husband. Go ahead. Thank you. Dave Smith? What? Go on, get in there. You get told Detective Chief Superintendent Benfield Brady claimed he killed others. Yeah, well, he wasn't listening, was he? Well, I am. Did he say who he killed? Or when or where? No. And you didn't ask? Why should I? Even when he told you he was going to use guns for this bank job? What bank job? Dave, what's this? Oh, me and Ian had this stupid idea about robbing a bank. What? You bloody idiot. Well, I didn't know if he was serious or not, did I? Even when we got rid of the stuff in the suitcases, I didn't know. What stuff? Stuff they thought would be incriminating. What exactly was in these suitcases? Hey! Answer me. There was some books of mine, the rest was theirs. I just helped them put the cases in the car and then they drove them off. Where? I don't know. Come on, son, he must have told you something. Where? Well, they might have said something about left luggage. They? So Myra was in on this too, yeah? Yeah. Ian said she was going to drive a getaway car. Jesus Christ, Dave, what else haven't you told me? Come on, Myra, you're just digging a big hole for yourself. You think you're being clever, but you're not. We've heard Brady's version and we've heard what Dave says. I've already told you, I've got nothing to say. My version of events of that evening are exactly the same as Ian's version of events. We found a piece of paper in Myra's car with the initials WH on it. I think that stands for Wooded, and that's here. Dunno. Well, these are the nearest moors to Attersley. Yeah, well, they took us to different places. So should you and me go for a walk, yeah? You don't really think there are bodies up here? I'm trying not to think anything, love. But if there are, I mean... We can't be anything to do with Myra. 
you said Brady made some remark about you having stood on the grave of one of his victims. Ian and Myra drove us up to the moors. Me and Ian went for a walk and there was a reservoir below us. He wanted me to stand in a particular place. Here! Do you think this is the spot? Is this the spot? I don't know. I have reason to believe that with David Smith you discussed killing people and burying them on the moors. It was all part of the fiction, to impress him. Smith says you told him after you killed Evans that was the mess you shit. Why say that if there were no others? That was to do with the situation we are in. I've got nothing to say. My version of events of that evening is exactly the same as Ian's. But it's not your version, is it? It's Ian's version. You're just using his words. Is it Brady says and Myra does? How many more times do I need to tell you? There was an accident. My version of events is exactly the same as Ian's. Tell me about this fiction to impress Smith. Ask Smith. No, I'm asking you. I told you, ask Smith. I've done nothing. As far as I know, Ian's done nothing. Dave Smith's a bloody little liar. Now, oh, come on, tell us exactly what went on that night. There was an accident. That's all I'm saying. Or should we call it murder? Why do you take that photograph? Well, I, uh, must have been attracted by the composition. Why is Myra looking at the ground? You'd have to ask her that. Well, I'm asking the photographer. Why is she looking at the ground? Is there something special about that particular piece of ground? Is it because it's a grave? Is she standing on a grave? Is her standing on a grave? Is your personal graveyard? Pictures. Just pictures. In that place, that grave, that was wooded, wasn't it? In that general area, I bag in. It was a fiction. I've got uh, police officers from three forces up there right now, Brady, digging up your fiction. Well, that is a monumental exercise in futility, my friend. <laughs> Sure you push the stick really deep. Go on. Can you tell us what's happening up here? Well, we've got members of the public helping with the search. They've come from far and wide around. If we find anything with the sticks that smells like human remains, thank you. We dig. So we don't miss anywhere. Keep it up, and all the grounds are here. Just can't tell you anymore. The search of Moorland, adjacent to the A628 Woodhead Pass, has been going on for over two days now but the police have still found no evidence that any bodies have been buried there. There's been no official confirmation from the police, but speculation I'm sorry, Mrs. continues Kilbride. There's that still the nothing. may be those of children. I see. There's been no official Mr. confirmation Mounty. either here, as to how sir. long this search may continue, but it's indications are that it may go on for some time. I think we might have something here, sir. No, that's not it. No, it's just a dead sheep. All right, keep at it, lads. Which room's Jackson in? Room number two. I'm going to mention some names to you. Names of children. I just want you to tell me if you've heard of them. Leslie and Downey. Never heard of them. Keith Bennett. John Kilbride. Never heard of him. All right, then. Have you heard of Pauline Reed? <laughs> Is that funny, Ira? I knew Pauline Reed. I grew up with her. I liked her. Leslie Ann Downey. Have you heard of Leslie Ann Downey? It has been pretty public. Papers, television, rewards. Nobody at work ever mentioned Leslie Ann Downey? And John Kilbride, you've never heard of him? I don't know him. I have never heard of him. Have you ever been to Ashton Market? 
No, I have never been to never. Ashton Market. Never, never been to Ashton Market. Where do you shop then? I shop at Sega sometimes. I go into the city centre. Where do you shop? John Cooper and I'm talking about went missing from Ashton Market, 23rd of November, 1963. And I'm supposed to have murdered him and buried him on the moors. I believe so, yes. And I suppose I did the same to the other names in this book, eh? Joan Crawford, Robert Urquhart, Alec Guinness. <laughs> Dearie me, I mean... Alec will be sorry to hear the premature end of his acting career. Do you have children? Eh? Two. Mm. Well, I can understand why this is a uh, emotional subject for you. See, the ground she's on here is quite flat and stony. Now, I've been all over, I can't find any ground like that round here. That's it, lads, come on. You think we're looking in the wrong place, don't you? you keep going. You keep I don't know. If there were more background in the photo, something to give us a reference point. Right, so if WH isn't Woodhead, what else could it stand for? Wuthering bloody heights, for all I know. Prescott's not going to let this go on for much longer. If we don't find the bodies, they're going to get away with this. Sir, message from Jock Carr. The suitcases that Smith told us about, he's found them. <clears throat> Good lad. Right, let's have a look then, shall we? You got a tape recorder in the station, sir. Yup. Go and ask the sergeant, will you? Find the tape recorder. Isn't that Leslie Ann Downey? Looks like her. Oh, fucking hellfire. We need to talk to Smith, sir. Jock? What's this about? Do you recognise any of this lot? The notebook's mine. I don't know anything about the rest of it. You lying little bastard. What? What am I supposed to have done? You know what's on that tape, don't you? You know what comes before that song, no? Yes, you do, because you were there when it was made. I wasn't. Little girl being asked to do unspeakable things for a man by a woman. Little girl crying for a man, begging for mercy. Only you didn't show any mercy, did you? 
You helped Hindley and Brady torture and kill her. Yelped killer. killer. Like yelped him killer with Evans. No. Well, let's see if we can jog your memory, shall we? Look at that. Who's that? That Leslie Ann Downey before you got hold of her. And she's sweet and she innocent. She trusted him. Now, I'll look what was done to her in the bedroom of number 16, eh? Look at that. <laughs> you were there, weren't you? You were watching. No, I wasn't. So what do you think of all mine and all, then? Well, it might not be Myra's voice on the tape. I mean, it, it might be some other woman. It's Myra's voice, all right. Do you think Dave told you everything about his relationship with Ian and Myra? Yeah. He didn't tell you about the armed robbery. So what else don't you know? Or what else could there be to know? Well, how would you describe his sexual inclinations? What's that got to do with anything? Brady lent him dirty books. Well, lots of people read books like that. Doesn't mean anything. And lots of people interfere with children. And some of them even murder them. Oh, you're not saying Dave's done that? I don't know. Do you think he could? Oh. I'm his wife, for God's sake. I live with him. I sleep with him. How can you ask me that? You live with him. You sleep with him. So who else would be in a better position to know the truth? Well, I don't know the truth about Dave, about my sister. I don't know the truth about Pluggy anything anymore. Notes taken from books I have enjoyed. He said that what she refused him, he was going to take by force. So let the girl be stripped naked. So the idea of raping young girls gives you a kick, does it? Mm -hmm. No. Rape is not a crime. It is a state of mind. Murder is a hobby and a supreme pleasure. I just copied that to impress him. No, no, come on, lad. You enjoyed killing Edward Evans, didn't you? And Leslie Ann Downey. John Kilbride, Pauline Reed. Pauline Reed? You think she's part of this? I know she is. I knew Pauline. I grew up with her. You think I could have killed her? That's exactly what Myra says, and she's lying. And Brady's lying, and I think you're lying too. I haven't killed anyone. I haven't. But you haven't told us everything. Have you? Have you? Shall we listen to that tape, shall we? Shall we listen to that little girl begging for mercy? <laughs> I'll play it to you, lad. I'll play it to you again and again till you tell me the truth. What haven't you told us? Edward Evans. What about him? <sighs> Maureen and me are in this shit with money. <sighs> the council are threatening to evict us. I told Ian. He said he'd go down Manchester, find a businessman, bring him back and we'd rob him. That's why Myra came round for me that night. I thought we were just going to frighten the bloke. So we'd hand over his wallet, but I walked in and... It was Ian with the axe. Why didn't you tell us this before? <laughs> because I knew what you'd think. You'd think what I'm trying not to. That Evans would still be alive now if me and Ian had made that plan. <laughs> but I promise you, I haven't hurt any children. <laughs> At least tell me you believe that. I do, actually, that. <laughs> Good lad. Have another fag. There may have been a plan for a robbery, but there's no murderer. Can I wait for him? Go on, then. Get your cell phone. Sir, 13-year-old girl from Hattersley has come forward with new information. She's saying that Brady and Hindley befriended her and took her out for some drives on the moors. Does she know which moors? Yes, she's very clear. It was Wessenden Head, Saddleworth. Use WH. Exactly. We've been looking in the wrong place. Right, we'll move the troops there tomorrow. I'll call Prescott and tell him. Oh, right, hang on. Do you know how Lancashire troops? Some are mine and some are Manchester's. You're not saying you don't want us to carry on searching, sir? No, I'm not saying that. Just be aware. I can't fund an operation like this indefinitely, and I'm sure that Manchester won't either. Thank you, sir. Relax, thank you. Please, relax. Come on, lad, boys. Absolutely. What's it going to wait? Stop, stop. Don't go without us there. I need to splash my boots for. Come on, Come on. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you, boys. Thank you very much. Is that Paul brought any gloves? No more. And is he going to bring any tomorrow? Yeah, book it. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Right. Thank Don't you worry, much. Bob. Yeah, save the space, Another mate. good day's work, lads. Thank you very much. Better luck tomorrow, sir. 
If there is a tomorrow. Sir? I don't think Prescott's going to let this go on any longer. What, you think this really is it? Stop! Stand up here! What? Something's bony sticking oh, out the ground, on, sir. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, just no, another no, dead no, sheep, no, lad. No. I don't think so, sir. Is here. Now there's glory to be had. We know whose body it is, yeah. All I know is it's not John Kilbride. Little girl. Are you ready, Dougie? When you are, Arthur. Excellent. Yeah, the same with you. Thank you very much. Sir. Now, that was Professor Poulsen, Upper Mill Mortuary. Mother's identified the body. It's Leslie Ann. Congratulations, everyone. What next? Well, we charged Brady and Hindley with the murder of Leslie Ann Downey. Then it stumbles on me over at the Queen's. What about the others? John Kilbride, Keith Bennett. Pauline Reed. Well, they're irrelevant now. Sir? What? I've, uh, oh. I've done another print from the original negative. I've been able to bring up a lot more of the background and look. I swear that is definitely Holly Brown not in the background. Right, Mash, are you saying if we walk around those rocks till we find a view that matches this one? We should find one of the graves. Where did you get the negative from, Mike? It was in the suitcases. But all that stuff got taken away by Manchester. I know. Went down there and nicked it off. Well, you bad lad. Sir, I think it's here. Mash.
Forensics, please, Pat. Yes, sir. Get the camera. Go on. No, let's stay. Oh, come on. Go, please. Do as you're told. Lads, get out. Danny, oh. come on, you two. Mum, I want to stay. Danny. I want to stay. Let him stay. Let him. such chance. I'm so sorry. Which room is Jackson It's an accident. Sorry to disturb some, um, some sad news. Your dog. We needed to establish her age in order to be sure that the photo of you crouching over John Kilbride's grave was taken after his disappearance, so we asked the vet to perform a dental x-ray and I'm sorry to say she never came round from the anaesthetic. You may have been fucking bastards. Yes, well, I'm a dog lover myself, so I can appreciate the distress. <laughs> sorry to interrupt, sir. Right, well, I'm sorry about your dog, but we must press on. It was a funny time of the night to be doing house calls.
just down there. Please repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You've already admitted that you and your husband were in trouble with the rent. Well, what's that got to do with it? You were desperate for money. Well, yes. You were aware your husband had sought Brady's help over the rent. I know he'd shown in the letter, that's all. You were not aware of any further conspiracy between them? No. Are you not in your husband's confidence? I believed what he told me. But he did not always tell you the truth. Nevertheless, you are married and feel you must stand by him. No. Are you all right, Mrs. Smith? I'm sorry. I'm aware of the advanced state of your pregnancy. Do you feel able to carry on? I've got to, haven't I? You've told the court that your sister was a regular visitor to Ashton Market. Yes, I have. Are you quite sure about that? There are many nearer places for her to shop. But she liked to go to Ashton. Mrs. Smith, you know it's believed John Kilbride was abducted from Ashton Market. Yes. And so to imply Myra regularly went there when she didn't might be to dangerously mislead the jury. Well, why would I want to do that? Because you have sided with your husband against your sister. No. All I want to do is tell the truth. Did you go shopping frequently with Myra, Mrs. Hindley? Yes. To your knowledge, did she ever go to Ashton Market? No. No. Can you think of any reason why she should go there? No. We have markets closer to home if we need them. Thank you, Mrs. Hindley. Here come the Smiths. Mr. Smith! This is your notebook. Yes. It contains numerous passages taken from books. From books Brady gave me, yes. There are passages justifying rape and murder. You believe rape and murder to be justifiable? No. There are passages dealing with sexual perversion of various kinds. Yes. Passages about a girl being flogged. And that kind of thing. Did you take pleasure in that? I was just trying to understand what the author was getting at. Oh. Did you tell Ian Brady you could make money by selling pornographic photographs? No, I didn't. On Boxing Day, 1964, you brought a girl to the house of Brady and Hindley, did you not? No! That girl was Leslie Ann Downey. Where have you got this from? And Brady told you the girl you had brought was too young. I never took her there. You nevertheless stayed downstairs while photographs were taken of the girl upstairs. And later, you took her away. This is all lies. And that was the last Brady and Hindley saw of her. No. I put it to you that you murdered Leslie Andel. No. I put it to you that far from merely watching, you helped Brady kill Edward Evans. I did not. The truth is that when you saw violence, you had to join in. I thought I'd come here as a witness. I thought it was them on trial, not me. No more questions, my lord. Has your lordship got any questions? No. You are released, Mr. Smith. Court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All rise. Mrs. West. It's not true what they're trying to say about Eve, me. Eve, come on, let's just go. I had nothing to do with what happened to Leslie Ann. Why should I believe you? Because it's the truth. Then come on, let's just go. You're a liar. You're a liar. David, Manchester Evening oh, News. Oh, How old did you know Brady oh, really, David? Oh, Can you tell us? Oh, you are pregnant. Oh, oh, this oh, is pregnant. Oh, She's oh, pregnant. Can you give us anything She's at all? Pregnant. Can you give us oh, anything? You're the third most murderer. Shut your face. You're the third most murderer, you are. Yeah, they're all from the same family, aren't they? I think it's this way. Nice, this way. 
Where's your husband? What? Speak to him. Hey. Hey. You are a liar. You are the head. Where? With the torch of my life. Oh, no. Get off him! Get off him! Ed. You must have known. Oh. You do it. I need to know. For oh. God's sake! Oh. I'm pregnant. For God's sake, I'm pregnant. I had your blood run through my veins, slipping, bleeding wrist. Ah. Ah. And kill me as well when you kill my Leslie. Come on. You deserve to say both of you. to make him understand that what Myra and Ian did had nothing to do with me. Yeah, well, why should people believe that? What? Well, Edward Evans wouldn't have died, would he, Dave? If he'd not let Ian draw you in. I didn't know they were going to kill him. Yeah, but he must have seen something in you, mustn't he? Eh? To make him think you could become part of it. Part of what? Whatever it was, him and Myra, it's you that's brought them on us, Dave. Shut up. It is him. No, it's you, you and me, bitch. <laughs> Tell us, Miss Hindley, what your feelings were for Ian Brady before you moved to Hattersley. I loved him. I still love him. Did you ever get wind of anything odd happening between Ian and David Smith? I suppose I sometimes did wonder what was going on. You've sat in this court. You've heard of several conspiracies between them. To take photographs of young girls, to rob a bank... I don't believe ..to lure that. a homosexual to Wardlebrook Avenue with the intention of robbing him. A conspiracy which ended in the death of Edward Evans. Did you have any idea of any of these plans? I had no idea at all. Were you in any way involved in the death of John Kilbride? I was not. Were you in any way involved in the death of Leslie Ann Downey? I was not. Were you in any way involved in the death of Edward Evans? No. No more questions, my lord. You may step down, Miss Hindley. The court is adjourned. We will reconvene after lunch. <laughs> Verdicts have been reached in the Moore's murder trial at Chester Assizes. Ian Brady and Myra Hindley have been found guilty of murder. Ian Brady has been convicted of the murders of John Kilbride, Leslie Ann Downey, and Edward Evans. Myra Hindley has been convicted of the murders of Leslie Ann Downey and Edward Evans. She was found not guilty of the murder of John Kilbride, but was found guilty of being an accessory. The jury retired earlier today and took just two hours, 23 minutes to reach their verdicts. The defendants remained impassive as they were read out and equally impassive as the judge, Justice Fenton Atkinson, sentenced the couple. Ian Brady, these were three calculated, cruel, cold-blooded murders. In your case, I pass the only sentence which the law now allows, which is three concurrent sentences of life imprisonment. In your case, Hindley, you have been found guilty of two equally horrible murders, and in the third as an accessory after the fact. On the two murders, the sentences, two concurrent sentences of life in prison.
been a waste of fucking time. I don't know why we bothered. If you two hadn't gone to court, Brady would have got away with all those murders except Edward Evans. He'd have been out in ten years and Myra would have walked free. And that's supposed to make us feel better, is it? I can see that it's been hard. Hard? I'm a child killer. The third mall's murderer. That's what they all believe. Well, they won't when they've had time to think about it. How do you know? He won. Brady won. I can't stop thinking about him. I mean, what was he doing on the night of Edward Evans? What was he thinking of? He had a secret, Dave. He had a monster of a secret, and what use was it to him without someone to share it with? Yeah, but he had Myra to share it with. Yeah. And I believe he was growing tired of her. I think she probably resisted it, but in order to keep him, she agreed to try and bring Dave into it. And in the end, he failed, didn't he? You two have got to try and get on with your lives now. What about Pauline Reed? Keith Bennett? I am not allowed to search for them. Only Manchester police can do that. Frankly, between you, me and the gate post, they're flatly refusing to do so. But I never said that. I'd best be going. No, no, you stay there. Yeah. I'm going to wish you two the very best of luck. All right? family I'll ever have now, Dave. I've lost Myra. Mum. I can't lose this. Yeah, I know. I know. I heard them coming. I hope someone kills it. Where is it on bloody moors? You, you filthy bitch! Get here! Dave, Don't leave me! Come on! Can I ever be a mother again? I'm a Hindley.
I've uh, made a pot of tea if you want some. That'd be nice, love. Nice place, are you? It's small, but it's much nicer than the last place. And I'm going to redecorate. And you got a job? Lucy's. Cleaning. That's where I saw Auntie Kath. I just... I didn't dare believe it when... when she said you'd want to see me. I'm so sorry. You've had a terrible time. All the state turned against us. We just kept hoping it'd... it'd go away. We just kept hoping if... if we had a family and... stuck together... it'd be OK. But it wasn't. Bricks through the window. Poison pen letters. God knows what else through the letterbox. People would spit at the kids. Taunt them. Me and Dave. We couldn't go anywhere without trouble. Eventually, one night, Dave went for someone. Got sent to Walton. I just couldn't cope. I was just in a pit. Drinking. Hopeless. I had the kids put into care. God forgive me. But I just thought I'd ruined their lives and they deserve better. Should have been in touch. Should have helped you. I felt I had to choose. Oh, Dave's out of jail now. He's got the kids back. Social... Social worker says they're doing okay. Some bread. Come here then, I'll take it off now. Here. Right, don't throw it too far though. Do you want some Paul? John, come away from the edge. Good luck. Oh, you stay this side of the boat, John. Hiya. Hi. Hello, boys. Ain't that lady? It's your mum. They've grown, haven't they? This is the food. Why can't we go? David's just like you. Named him well then, didn't we? Well, we got a John and a Paul, and I wasn't going to let you have Ringo, was I? Never thought I'd see him again. Let alone have him back under my own roof. You've done so well for them. 
So why would you want to let me see him again? I think I'm a decent dad these days, but unless I suddenly sprout tits, I'm never going to be their mother, am I? Only you can be that. They look happy, don't they? I'd hate to get in the way. Of what? You might have met someone else for a start. I haven't. Not that I didn't get a few proposals in Walton mind. Come on. So when are we going to see you again, then? Moby. <sighs> you don't know how long for this moment. How are you? Okay. If only that were true. You've been through hell because of me. I haven't come here to make you say I that. I want to say it. I think about the consequences of my actions all the time. The hardest, of course, is the children. Living with the knowledge I help bring such suffering on them and their families. But there's not a day goes by when I don't think about what I've done to you. I mean, people make excuses for me, saying I must have been damaged when I was little. Damaged? How? You know how Dad used to leather me sometimes. He used to leather me too, Myra. I didn't do what you did. I know. I know, Moby. And I mustn't make excuses. I keep telling them that. Even when they say it was all Ian's fault. That he changed me. Corrupted me. Who's they? The governor. And the others. I've written to Ian. Told him I want to sever all contact. I've um, been going through my stuff, getting rid of every trace of his influence on me. I want you to take these away. I don't want to see them again. It makes me so ashamed when I look at them. You weren't always like that, Myra. 
You were a different person once. And I want to be that person again, Mo. I've started going to Mass. And confession. And in finding God again. I do feel like I've found the real me. Please. There has to be forgiveness, surely, for all of us. There has to be redemption. Quiet on the western front. Yeah. Never thought I'd get them down so easy. Well, um, I suppose I'd better be getting on my way. Why not stay? The night? Well, for good. You mean that? Yeah. Be a family again, eh? Yeah. What about your mum? She'd be pleased. Yeah, but she blames me for everything, doesn't she? Not anymore. She's had years to think it through. She understands the real blame lies with Brady. No, she still thinks Myra's innocent. No. Nor does Myra. She's accepted full responsibility. She's told the truth. How do you know? She told me. You've been to see her? Yeah. She's admitted everything. What has she admitted? Dave, I, I don't want to get into this now. What has she admitted? That she picked up John Kilbride and Leslie Ann Downey, delivered them into Ian's hands. And that's it? It bullied her into it, Dave. But she knows now it was a terrible thing to do. If she was bullied into it, then why was she smiling on that picture Brady took of her on John Kilbride's grave? Well, she didn't know it was his grave. Oh, come on. She was in on all of it, abducting him, helping to rape, kill and bury him. That was just some sick little joke they could share afterwards. And Leslie Ann Downey, if all Myra did was pick her up for Brady, then why was her voice on that tape? And Keith Bennett, what about him? Myra's adamant she had no part in that. All right, Pauline Reed. And she honestly knows nothing about that either. And, and anyway, I mean, who's to say anything happened to Pauline? She's she might even still be alive. Moss. And if Myra really was sorry, she'd start by telling the police where she's buried. And Keith Bennett too. I just, I just, I have to believe what my heart tells me, Dave. And my heart tells me whatever Myra did in the past, she's a different person now. I mean, they wouldn't be thinking of giving a parole if that weren't true. Thinking of releasing her? If you could see her, Dave, if you could speak to her, you'd see she's, she's the old Myra, a warm, loving person. She asks after the kids all the time. She'd like to see them one day. She's not coming near my kids. She's worse than Brady, Maureen. I mean, he's just a sicko, a sex case, the king of the sex cases. But Myra... She's human. She had feelings. Remember the tears when Angela Dawn died? A card she gave us. Another little flower for God's fucking garden. Jesus, she was killing kids at the same time. All right! All right! You believe what you want to. But please, please, can't you let me do the same? Sorry, Maureen. Look, if we 
can't put it behind us. We've got to, for the kids' sake. We can do it, girl. We can. Do you want some toast? There you go. Come on, oh. stop playing with your toys now. Eat your breakfast. Come on. Are you all sorted? Right. right, come on, boys. Eat up now. Granddad, look at his pain. Come on. That's it. Put yourselves in there. Come on. Hmm? Come on, don't play with it. Eat it. <sighs> Oh, come on, don't mess with that. You only need a little bit of butter on there. Come on, lads. Ah, uh, never mind that now. I want you to eat your breakfast or you won't grow up to be big and strong like your dad. No telling tales now. Come on, eat your breakfast. He wants eat to take your his shoes off. Ah, oh, he can take his shoes off later. I can. Right, OK. Now eat up, boys. Well, you're nice. I've, um, I've given him the breakfast. Good. I've run out of eyeliner. Just going to nip for the chemist. OK. Hey, what have I just said? <laughs> 